And uh, I'm excited because I don't know what I'm going to do. No, that's not totally true. Uh, it's, it's something new. We have been sharing together all month, Mark chapter 2, verses 20 uh, and 21, talking about uh, uh, how important it is that we put a new piece of cloth, or that we don't put an old piece of cloth with a new piece of cloth, uh, uh, how important it is that we don't pour new wine into old wineskins. And uh, there is nothing worse than in all the world than to go to a place or to go into something that you know absolutely nothing about, and so you're always wondering what's next. So I want to take just a few minutes to uh, give you the what's next, okay? Uh, I have some ushers uh, that are going to assist us, and they're going to give to each one of you a couple pieces of paper. And I want you to have them so that you can hold them, and we'll refer to them a little bit later in the message. But I want you to have them now so we don't interrupt the message in the meantime. While they're doing that, let me kind of give you uh, the how that we're going to do something here at the end of the service. In the midst of the message, I hope to give you the why, but I want to give you the how we're going to do it so that it doesn't uh, blindside you that you can kind of know what to expect. A part of this piece of paper that they're giving to you is an opportunity for you to look at spiritual gifts. And it would be our hopes, <clears throat> it would be our hope that as you listen to the Word of God today, and God begins to do a work in your, in your mind, in your heart, to, to reflect on what God is teaching each of us, that you and I would begin to think about how God has gifted us in the life of His kingdom to be useful in the building up of His church. And so, what we would like for you to do. We'd like for all of you to be a part of this, even if you're new to this church or you're just here as a guest today. I, I think that for all of us, for us to think about what God is doing in us and how he wants to use us is important. Now, you may not be as comfortable in, in turning that back in, and we understand that, but we, as the staff, we are interested in knowing how God is working in our lives and how he wants to use us to be the best that we can in building up his kingdom. So when we come to a point in the midst of, at the conclusion of the message, we're going to play a video that says, Do Something. It's the name of a song written by Matthew West. And uh, while you're uh, watching the video and, and thinking through that, we want you to consider what is it that, that God would, might ask you to do. And, and to fill out that form with your name, uh, to put what you might think could be your spiritual gifts. And, and we're going to talk about that. I, I'm giving you the why later. Now it's the how. Then, what we would like to ask you to do, there are five different tables across the sanctuary. Two in the back and three across the front. And we would like for you to come to the table and bring with you your paper and uh, give it to one of the uh, uh, staff individuals that will be at each table. And then when you do that, you will then take from the table a piece of bread and a cup. And when you do that, it will be uh, an opportunity for you to share in the sacrament of communion, remembering that Christ has called us all to be part of his body and to remember the sacrifice that he has made. Now, when you take the sacrament, you're welcome to stand right there beside uh, one of the staff as we serve you, and, and you can take it there. Or you might want to kneel at one of the altars and to pray and meditate for a moment and then take it. Or you might want to simply return to your seat and hold it in your hands and reflect on it. Because while you're doing that, there's another... Uh, video that's going on that has words to a very powerful song that uh, we heard a few weeks ago that will help you connect with what God is doing. Okay, so that's the how.
towards the end of the service, you're going to fill out your paper. You're going to bring it to a t- take it to a table, uh, take the sacrament. You may share it at the, at, there at the table or at the altars or return to your seat and uh, partake of the bread and the juice as a reminder of the sacrament of Christ. And then at the conclusion, we'll have prayer. That's the how. Are you ready for the why? I am. So take your Bibles and turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. When you have found that, I would invite you to stand with me, and the words will be on the screen. And listen, follow along as I read to you this very powerful word that the Apostle Paul writes to a church that's trying to discover what it means to be a part of the kingdom of God. Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Are you ready? Hear now the word of the Lord. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we form So in Christ, though many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophecy, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary... 
If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Hey, Father, uh, in these next few moments, uh, as we kind of talk in a new way, I pray that the message will be new. I pray, Lord, that it will not be the words of a person, but it will be the voice of your Spirit that, that takes human words and transforms them in the ears of the hearer, and that we would be your instrument, your vessel, as we receive your love, may we then in turn share it with those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Paul is writing this letter to this church. And uh, it's just an interesting letter to me as he writes and goes through. Early on in the chapter, he, he helps them to discover how they become a follower of Christ. They, he helps them begin to understand uh, the, the depth of their sinfulness and yet the great expansion of God's love for them. And that they too can become part of the family they can become part of the, the body of Christ. And Paul begins this letter by saying, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view, in view of God's mercy. Have you ever stopped to really look and think about God's overwhelming mercy? That he would love you, that he would love me a sinner, unworthy of his grace. But from the very moment of my conception, he longed that I would discover his love for me. And even before my conception, at the beginning of time, God, as he began to look at his creation, said, I have a plan. I have a plan to redeem mankind. I have a way. I am willing to give my son so that whoever would believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercies, to offer your bodies. And, and here's where it's, a, sometimes I kind of get boggled up in this because these two words do not go together. Living sacrifice. I, I mean, everything about sacrifice in my mind has to do with death. But Paul says, he puts these two words together and he says, because of God's love for you, your life that is alive, your breathing, your giving, your doing, has to come with sacrifice. Offer your bodies, your lives, as a living sacrifice to Him. And then he begins to really allow the rubber to meet the road. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. I, I find that one of the easiest things in the world is to fall back into the old way of doing things. It just seems to be so easy to, to, to get my eyes just a little bit off where Jesus wants them to be and to begin to allow myself to slip back into the pattern of the old way. But he says, don't, don't conform to this pattern. But be transformed. Our, our kids know about transformers. 
Uh, when I was a kid, Transformers was some round thing on a pole. But now children understand Transformers. They, they really have created a toy that really fits the word. It's one thing, and then all of a sudden it becomes something else. Be transformed. And Jesus was saying, Paul was saying to us through his letter, Jesus wants us to change. He wants us to put to death the old way of life and become like him. To become like him. And then he simply says, now, now begin to understand, this is what true worship is really about. Becoming like Christ. I sometimes uh, shudder a little bit because we oftentimes talk about church as being our worship. We talk about worship as being praying and singing and even hearing the word, and that's all part of it. But we mustn't ever allow ourselves to, to, to forget that true worship is becoming like God, becoming and walking and following after Jesus. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then you will begin to test and to prove the will of God. Now, Paul says, I have a, a I, I want you to understand that each one of us has a place of service in the kingdom. Every Part of the body has a position. You know, wouldn't it be kind of funny? Wouldn't it look pretty funny? And wouldn't it be kind of worthless if our hands were attached to our ear? You know, it doesn't work very well. I, I'd have a pretty hard time taking the, the, the sheet off of the communion because the hand is not designed to be connected to the ear or to be the ear in fact there's nothing in the hand there is no eardrum in the hand and i i don't know all the 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 way that things work in the midst of and how god created us in the ear but if you took the ear out and, and removed the eardrums and all that part and you simply attached the hand what would you hear you, you couldn't. There's nothing in the hand that's designed to hear. But God has created us with many members, and he puts them all together to be useful to live out our life. And Paul uses that as a, a very vivid illustration that every person here today has a place in the body of Christ. And some of us may not be the hand, some of us may be the ear, but when we're all put together, it truly begins to work at its very best. And when the body of Christ, which is the church, when all of us say, okay, Lord, here I am, show me what you have gifted me to do, what you want me to do in your kingdom, what you have provided for me to be a part of, then I can be a part of helping the kingdom of God grow. Now, Paul lists just seven gifts in his chapter. And, and there are other gifts, and he writes about others in, in the, to the letter, in the, uh, uh, to the Corinthian letter, and also to the letter to the Ephesus. But for this morning, we're just going to talk very briefly about the seven that he lists in Romans chapter 12. These are not all inclusive. Uh, in fact, uh, I guess as we read through them, you may sense in your own heart, well, none of those truly apply to me. And that could be. It could be that some of your gifts are, are really listed in, in another place, in, in Corinthians or in in Ephesians. But the, the point is, all of us, all 272 of us here this morning, or however many there are, every one of you, every one of us, has a place 
in the body of Christ. And he longs to use us to build his kingdom. So in Romans chapter 12, he speaks of these seven, prophecy. Now prophecy, and if you want to look at your paper, it means one that has the ability to receive a divinely inspired message and deliver it to others. Now I've never really thought of myself as being one who is, has the gift of prophecy. And, and, and if I were to take the spiritual gifts inventory, I'm not sure that it would come very high on my list. But I, I, the Lord helped me yesterday to, to make this a little more usable, a little more user-friendly to understand the opportunities that he's given us. I, I went through Walmart yesterday, and I purchased bread for communion. Uh, now, when you purchase bread for communion for the church, uh, you kind of fill up your basket with bread. I, I mean, you know, there's 300 of us here today, and, and we're doing something a little bit different. It's a little bit unusual. And so, needless to say, when I go through the checkout, the clerk said, man, you're buying a lot of bread. And all of a sudden, it clicked. Here was an opportunity that the Lord was giving me to share the message, to, to take his divinely inspired message of love that he loves us and he gifts us. And I had the opportunity to share in a brief few moments to plant a seed about the message and the love of Christ. Now, our conversation there yesterday, actually, the, the young lady attends uh, uh, another church uh, in Oklahoma City, and, and it opened up a door for us to begin to talk just for a few minutes about God's grace and God's power. But what I'm trying to say is that some of you, we tend to think of prophecy as, as really only a gift that, that people can use if they're the preacher or, or maybe a Sunday school teacher. But folks, I'm telling you, some of you have the gift of prophecy, and you're, you're not going to use it in the church. Although gifts are designed to edify the church and build up the church, part of the way that we build it up is by taking the church outside of the walls to places like the cash register at Walmart or the workplace or the school hallways and to share. Some of you may have the gift of prophecy. In fact, I wonder sometimes if many of us need to begin to ask the Lord, okay, Lord, how is it that you want to, to work in me so that I could take your divine message of love and share it with those around us? Prophecy. Ser serving. The spiritual gift of service or ministering covers a wide range of activities. It refers to any act of service done in genuine love for the edification of the community. Many of you, I think, have the gift of service because I have seen it over and over again that you are willing to invest some of your time, some of your efforts, some of your abilities to serve those around you and to edify the community. Serving, teaching. It means to teach, instruct, instill doctrine, explain, and expound. Many of you have the gift of teaching. And I want to encourage you. God is placing those with the spiritual gift of teaching to be in positions. I, I told Becky last night, I said, you know, I, I think I know what I want to do in the church after I retire. I, I, I still got a few years before I'm going to retire. Uh, so I, I, I'm just beginning. You know, there's that new commercial on TV. The, the lady walks in and turns in her resignation because she's going to retire in 15 years. Have you seen that? She's beginning to plan. And so I'm beginning to plan. I don't have, I don't have to wait 15 years, but I'm beginning to plan. I, I want to work with young people when I retire. I, I want to be able to just spend time and hang out with them. Because I think that they, are, they really have an interest to discover what it means to be a follower of Christ. And so I hope that when, if God brings me to the point of retirement, that I can get to spend time and hang out and return to spending time with young people and teaching them 
and being involved in their lives. The, the fourth gift is that of encouragement. The Spirit of God gives this gift to people in the church to strengthen and encourage those who are wavering in their faith. There's a lot of people around us that are struggling in our faith. I, I've been there. I, I could give you a couple times, even recently, and, and struggles with relationships and family situations where I'm just saying, okay, God, where are you? Help me with my faith here today because I'm not understanding that. And, and invariably, someone comes along with the gift of encouragement and helps me deal and, and, and move forward. Some of you, many of you, have the gift of encouragement. Leadership, or lead, as it says in the word. This word means to lead, to assist, to protect, and to care for others. I've never thought about leadership as being that of protection and assisting. I've always thought of leadership as helping people get to where they want to go. And, and that's part of assisting, but I, th I think the idea of caring really helps me hone it down. Giving means to impart or to give sincerely, generously, and without pretense or hypocrisy. Giving. That's not just with your wallet, although it definitely involves financial gifts. But some of you give a tremendous amount of time to share the good news, and then offer encouragement to others. And the last gift that Paul mentions in Romans is that of mercy. And of course, I would say, as, as we have written here, all Christians are called to be merciful. There should be some element of love in our hearts for all people. But the gift of mercy, it means to be patient and compassionate toward those who are suffering or afflicted. I, I tell Becky many times that is, I am not very compassionate. That is not one of my gifts. But some of you are tremendous. And you make a world of difference in the life of the church when you, with a compassionate heart, come alongside people who are hurting and suffering and afflicted, and you extend to them the love of Christ. Those are just seven. They're not all inclusive. Um, I thought about making a whole, the list of, you know, of all of them, and we talked about it in staff. I thought about, you know, it'd be really cool if every one of us, all 273 of us now, we've grown a little bit. That was supposed to be a joke. You're supposed to smile. Are you awake? <laughs> Thanks, Ryder. That was so funny. I lost train, my train of thought. If all of us were at work utilizing what the gift that God has given to us, we wouldn't know what to do in ourselves. Things would be so incredible that the God who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever think or ask would be using us. to proclaim the news, to encourage, to give, to extend mercy, to teach sound doctrine so that people could grow up in their faith. So I want you to begin to think about what is it that God has gifted me to do? And as you do that, I want you to begin to think, okay, within the body of Christ, how am I using that gift? So take that, that second page of that paper, and, and it has a place for you to begin to write your name, and, and there's some extra pencils in the pew card holders in front of you, or many of you have pens, and, and share together. And, and while this video plays, I, I just want you to reflect and to think about what it is that God is gifting you. Maybe it's one of these seven, maybe it's something else. Maybe he's called you to be an apostle, to, 
to go uh, in a way to proclaim the word or a missionary. I, I don't know. Although missionaries need the gift of teaching. Maybe he's calling some of you to use your gift to become a minister. I, I don't know. But what I do know is this. According to the word of the Apostle Paul in the word of God, he has gifted every one of us to be useful in his kingdom to build up the church. So as we watch this song that says, do something, just listen for the Lord's voice, the Holy Spirit, to help you think about what it is that he's gifted you to do. Maybe you need to go through and, and circle some of those things. Yeah, I can, I'm involved in that, so yeah. The Holy Spirit will guide you and direct you. So listen and watch the words of this song and reflect on it, and then I'll come back when the song is finished. I woke up this morning, saw a world full of trouble. Now I thought, how do we ever get so far down? And how's it ever going to turn around? So I turned my eyes to heaven. I thought, God, why don't you do something? Just couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty, children sold into slavery. The thought disgusted me, so I shook my fist at heaven. I said, God, why don't you do something? He said, I did. Yeah. I created you. If not a spin. It's time for 
we can only do something, we can only take the gifts that God has given us when we truly recognize that God has loved us so much that he would care about us to give us these gifts so that we could then take his love and just share it with those around us. I wanted to do communion a little bit different today. I just always think it's vitally important that the sacrament never become religious or ritual, that it always become experiential and always become personal. And so today I've uh, created uh, at each of the tables out of bread kind of a, a body. You'll see the shape when you get there. It has a head. The head's not cut because the head is Christ. Uh, we are his arms, his legs, and his feet. And so the, the arms and the feet are cut so that you can just take a piece of, of the bread and, and take it, uh, then a cup with it, and uh, share it together here at the moment at the altars, return to your seats, wherever you'd like to that moment of personal interaction with the Holy Spirit that you remember how much Christ has loved you. While that's going on, there will be a song playing with the words on the screen. Um, it's a powerful song. I want you to meditate, to reflect. You don't have to be in a hurry to rush the table. It's a, a fairly lengthy song. When you do come to the table, if you'd fill out your paper, I would ask that you would come and give it to one of the, uh, those at the table to, to hold it and to receive it. Uh, because as God has loved us, he calls us to go out and serve, to use these gifts. And so this is just kind of a, an interactive way that, that we are saying to God, to the body of Christ, I'm really interested in using my gifts to build your church, to be involved in building your kingdom. The Church of Nazarene practices open communion. If you're not a regular attender here, we're still invited to share. If you've received Christ as your Savior, you're invited to come. And, and don't feel pressured to give a paper. Uh, that's just to help. Uh, it's, this is some new wine and new wineskins kind of thing. But, but receive the sacrament today. May it be a, a meaningful time of sharing together. Let me pray for you, and then we'll start the video. And as your heart is ready, two tables back in the back, three across the front, that you come and receive the sacrament today. Let's pray. Father, as uh, we spend these few moments uh, being challenged, I hope, uh, by your Spirit to look at uh, how you have uniquely gifted us, that we will truly begin to think of and look at and reflect on the ways that we're using the gifts to do something. But we can only do something because of your great love for us. So, Lord, I pray now that in the same way that you took the bread and broke it and gave thanks to your disciples, that as they shared in that moment, they were reflective of the great love that you were showing to them. And may we be reflective today about that. And then after the supper, he, as he took the cup and gave it to each one of those disciples and, and said to them, this is the blood of the new covenant. I pray, Lord, that we would understand that you have something new for us to experience in our relationship with you. May these last few moments of this service together be significant in our relationship with you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. As you feel led and comfortable, go to one of the tables and receive the sacrament.
these pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered mended and pulled empty handed but not forsaken I've been set free I've been set
Father, it's because of your love and your amazing grace that we are allowed to participate in what we know as the body of Christ, the church. Father, because love and grace are action words, we're called to take action on what it is that you have so graciously given to us. Father, as we've sat here today and we've thought about a world that desperately needs to see examples of what the love and grace of God are like, I pray that I pray that all of us would come to a greater realization that you have called us to do something. God, I know that I can't do everything, but I can do something. So God, as an act of my own worship, as an expression of my understanding that you have gifted me. Not just to rejoice in the fact that I'm gifted, but you've gifted me so that I might serve you and your purposes in the world where you've placed me. I want to go on record as one that's willing to do something. Father, I, th- I think about what could be accomplished through this church as each of us begin to use the gifts that you have given to us in the church and through the church in the different neighborhoods where you've placed us to be light and salt in the different places of employment where you have given to us the privilege of being salt and light. And I pray, God, that we would be marketplace Christians, that we would take our faith and we would use that faith in such a way that we will be able to communicate through our lives, through our actions. That we have been entrusted by the God of heaven to bring heaven to earth. We are your kingdom people. Father, whether our gift is the gift of prophecy or whether it's the gift of serving, or whether it's the gift of teaching, or whether it's the gift of giving or leading or showing mercy. God, would you help us to find ways to use those gifts to the glory and honor of the God who has so graciously entrusted them to us. And in that process, O God, may we have the privilege of touching lives in such a way that eternities are impacted. May your kingdom come and may your will be done through us even as it is in heaven. 
So God, we receive the charge. We accept the challenge. And it's our desire to carry out the call that you've placed upon each of our lives to be the people of God in the places where you have planted us. And we give all glory and honor and praise to the God that has been so gracious to allow us to partner with him in the greatest enterprise the world has ever known called the church. Now, God, may we leave empowered by your spirit. And may we be more than conquerors through the Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. We pray in his strong name. Amen. Thank you for watching today online. It has been our privilege to share this time with you. I'm Pastor Terry Armstrong, and I want you to know that if we can do anything to assist you, any words that you would like to say, any comments that you would like to make, or anything that you would like to tell us about what God is doing in your life, please do not hesitate to give us a call. Our number is 405 376 2892, or you can email me directly at terry at mustangnaz.org. Again, we just hope that today your spirit, your heart has been encouraged by the presence of God. And so now I just want to say to you, may the peace of our Lord and Savior reign and rule, and may He give you His calmness in the midst of your storms. In Christ's name we pray these things for you. Amen and amen.